<laughs> hey, welcome to Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones, and I'm thrilled to embark on this journey of exploration with you. We often find ourselves reflecting on the choices we've made and wondering how our lives might have unfolded differently if we had taken a different path. Here's the beauty of hindsight. It gives us a chance to gain wisdom and learn from our past decisions. Look, this podcast is a platform to dig deep into those pivotal moments and uncover the invaluable lessons hidden within. <laughs> Look, I'm Lee Jones, your host, and I couldn't be more excited to have you on board. So let's dive right in and explore the fascinating realm of decisions on Hindsight the Podcast. When you look back in hindsight, everything is 2020. In hindsight, we make mistakes we're learning from. This. In hindsight, it should be your today and your tomorrow. In hindsight, it's so much clearer now. This is Hindsight the Podcast, and introducing your host, Lee Jones. Hey, uh, and welcome to Hindsight, the podcast. This is your host, uh, Lee Jones. I know I just got introduced, but I like to say that anyway. Um, but today on Hindsight, I have a, a really fun and, and powerful and strong young lady who is uh, owns her own business. And we just want to really focus in a little bit on getting in, just getting in the game, coach. Put me in the game, coach. I think that's how I'll say it. You know, a lot of times we sit on the sideline and we watch life pass us by and we see things and we make comments and we talk about how if, if I was it, I would do it this way, you know, whatever the scenario is, right? But we never really get in the game and put the money where our mouth is at. But my guest here, um, she actually did that. And her name is Joy and she's the owner of Be The Difference Clothing, a business founded in 2013 with designs aimed at inspiring and empowering others. Joy's journey began when she decided to break free from being a mere bystander and create change through her addiction kills the family design. With a focus on comfort, support, and meaningful messages, Be The Difference Clothing appeals to people of all backgrounds. Join us as we explore Joy's mission to ignite sparks of positivity and promote love on this episode of Hindsight, the podcast. How are you doing, Joy? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Um, just when you were reading that bio, I was like, wow, I haven't heard that in a long time. So in hindsight, you need reminders of what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how far you've come and the accomplishments that have yet need to be laid, you know? So yes. thank you for reading that. <laughs> <laughs> So, so how are how are you doing this uh, this beautiful morning? I can't complain. You know, life is good. Um, I know I've just grown to be thankful for you know the life that I get to live. You know, because a lot of times, like you said just a minute ago, people just let things pass by because you know we're told to wait or we're told to wait to the right time. Sometimes subliminally, we're told it. So you right. know. The idea of be the different clothing is to get into that subliminal, get into the also get into the root of where trauma started because that's where we all end, and we can begin once our trauma is healed. So I'd like to help people expose what what's really been holding them back, and then move forward. You know, right, right, awesome. I appreciate that. Hey, so can can you share? So for me, I know I talked about Addiction Kills. Is that the first design that you, Addiction Kills the Family? Was was that your initial uh, introduction into into your business venture now? That was a pivotal. Um, that was a pivotal introduction. But my first, first, first very first design was called um, Work Hard, Snack Harder. So I used to be at the gym seven days a week. And <laughs> I would be so nervous. And, um, you know, just to expose or admit the fact that when I get home, I eat Snickers bars and Kit Kats and Bunch of Crunch. And I was yeah. like, ice cream. And I was like, you know what? You gotta, you have to admit your fault. You know what I'm saying? Even though you're a gym junkie, people see that you're growing. They think you're all healthy. But I'm like, no, that's not the case. So I actually posted that on um, Instagram, not Instagram. I 
posted that on Facebook. And one of my relatives said, that should be a shirt. And I said, okay. And that's how, pretty much how oh. the Golden was first. Because of my admission, I see what I'm saying, guys, when you work through your trauma right. and things that have held you back. And look what, look how many doors can open. Imagine if I never admitted that or felt the desire to admit it or, or just paid attention to that, uh, that clinging of admit your fault. Right. Expose it. You know what I mean? I still do snack. I'm not going to let, I, I'm not going to stop and take the funk. I do still snack, but I am mindful that it's messing up my body. So I try my best. It's not easy, but I try. You know, you know Joy, I'm sitting here looking at a half eaten uh, chocolate <laughs> chip muffin right? <laughs> that I have right here in front of me. And I'm listening to your words and it's, it's almost like, get your stuff together, Lee. <laughs> You're like, no, I don't want my muffin anymore. You better eat that muffin. Oh, man. It's good, too. It's good, too. But you said pivotal. So can you share more about the pivotal moment when you decided you didn't want to be a bystander anymore? And and kind of how that shaped your journey uh, with Be the Difference Clothing. So I guess kind of just walk us through that. Absolutely. So I want you guys to close your eyes and envision a cold winter night around December back in 2000, let's say 13. I was driving home from a church event and for the first time in my entire life, I saw someone on the corner stuck backwards. Now we always see things on TV, we hear about it, but to actually physically witness someone backwards, like an accordion and swaying backwards, I was just like, as I turned the corner, I was just so like shock, but then something clicked in me and said, "Well, you're doing what all of us would do. We feel bad at, in the moment. We want to help, but there's no way we feel like we can help." But I said, "Joy, you can't. You can no longer be that standby and just let things happen. Because if you want to see less of this happening in your community and to people in general, or just to humanity in general, you need to do your part." And I was never, I felt like I was never a public speaker at that point. And so I said, my words, people always loved my writing and my words. And I said, well, that's going to be it. So I came up with the phrase, addiction kills the family. Um, a dear friend of mine, you know, they passed away now, but I was going back and forth with her about what I should call the t-shirt. And it just came out to being better as addiction kills the family. And just for a fact, Outside of just hearing the words, I put uh, bear claws. And with the bear claws, through the words, addiction kills the family, like blood dripping. Now, I know mm. it's plastic, but that's how life is. If we don't start just seeing things for what it really is and saying, you know what, this is, this is not good anymore. Let me do something about it. It's a conversational thing. So if anything, we build awareness through that shirt. We build conversational pieces through that shirt. We build people being like, wow, that's me. I need to go do something about it. And it also does not only encompass substance abuse because people right. are addicted to so many things. We have people who are addicted to their cell phone, working, addicted to eating. There's so many addictions. So that's why I kind of left it synonymous just to addiction kills the family. Not substance, not drugs, but addiction. So all of us who have some type of addiction, we need to work on that. And I feel like the best way to test to see if you do have an addiction is how much time are you spending with your family? Now, when you do spend time with your family, what are you thinking about most? Your family or that thing? And that's when you know you can expose. I got to either let that go or like slow down on it. Right. So that's why I say it's the pivotal thing. And I said, you know, I don't want to have a company that's just like only about like fun, funny things, funny, do something effective, you know? So that's how it all came about. I remember I said a joke when I was younger and someone said, Lee, you should be a comedian. Maybe that was my calling back in the day. Definitely not funny anymore. But uh, to see, and the reason why I bring that up is that we have these opportunities and we have these in a positive way, triggers, right? That kind of nudge you and give you a hint on what your purpose is. 
on what it is you should be doing, right? And for that person to say, hey, that should be on a shirt, sparked an idea that has grown for you to what is Be The Difference clothing today. So that's a really good story. And I have seen, you know, only on the news, I've never seen it in person where the, the person is so strung out that they're they're walking backwards. And that's scary. You know, and that's in scary. In the winter time. Like, exactly. It was cold. You know, when we used to have real winters. And yeah. I mean, like, they were backwards. Like, their, their front of their bodies was to their back. So, like, mm. it was almost, the front of their bodies were almost touching backwards. Um, like, I would say it was parallel to their um, kneecap. Backwards. Not frontwards. Backwards. Yeah, no, and I hear you. It scared me. It scared me. And I was just like, the first thing I thought about, to be honest with you, was when that person was a, a toddler or when they went elementary school, I guarantee they never, ever thought that it would be an addict. In and that, that broke my heart. Yeah. It broke my heart. Yeah. Wow. So you made the t-shirts. How did you go about doing that? How did you go about getting the message of addiction kills the family? Like what business sense did you have? Did you already have it in you or did you have to go figure that part out? Because a lot of times when we start business ventures, right, we we have great ideas and we can execute whatever the tasks are for the business. But the business part is where we struggle. Let me tell you. My family is from the Caribbean, so, you know, we work. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. In all seriousness, I used to manage a Christian rap artist. And so I had to, I acquired all of these skills. Good. And I never knew that these skills would end up being effective for me and what I do, because I just thought for the rest of my life, I would be managing his career. And we would be on these award shows and, traveling the world. So, you know, when that kind of dissolved, I, you know, really that it, it just, everything worked out the way it was supposed to. When it dissolved, right. that's when I started going to the gym more often. And when I posted that, that's when I was like, well, I already know how to start a business. I already know how to incorporate. I already know how to trademark. I had to do all these things for the artist. So it was like simple, very simple. And, and, and so, like, when things happen in your life, everybody out there, when things happen in your life, use those tools that you learn, or you never know if the tools that you learned or you think that you're never going to use again is going to actually pivot you to your next destination. You know, it, it, I just, so I could never be upset with the fact that things dissolve because it worked out for my, it worked out in my favor. I didn't have to worry about being taken advantage of starting a business. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know if you guys know, but you can actually go on your website for the state that you live in and open your business that way instead of going through something like start a third party. But instead of going through a third party to set it up for you, you can do it yourself. And it costs minimal. And you can also... After you incorporate, you get a free EIN. That's basically um, the social security number for your business. That is mm-hmm. free. These letters will come in the mail that will tell you, oh, we could give, we could get you your EIN. But remember, those are third-party vendors trying to make money off of something that you get for free anyway. Right. So once you incorporate, don't get an EIN. Wait for the government, the federal government, to send it to you. It's free. <laughs> tips, 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 tips. Right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to be afraid to start your own thing and and never ever ever let your um never ever let your yeah inadequacy stop you or what you think is an inadequacy stop you from uh being who you authentically should be. Because you right. don't know God, Jamaica creator or whoever you believe in has entrusted you this long or whatever stage of life that you're in to carry out a mission. We need to go back to connecting to our God, make a creator, whoever you believe in, whatever force that came and helped you be formed. You need to get back connected with that so you can actually do your purpose and live an abundant life. Wow. Are you a writer? Are you, are you an author? Have you written anything? I did. Let me tell you. There's a backstory to that. <laughs> I was getting my hair done. <laughs> I was getting my hair done. 
and um, we happened to be watching Queen Sugar. And I, I don't watch TV, so I didn't know what Queen Sugar was. But when I get my hair done, that's when I get my TV fixed and my okay. neck fixed. So the woman <laughs> that was sitting there that evening, she was a scholar, you know, a teacher and a scholar of her own right. Um, she said, you know what? I would love to see more black women, young black women, um, become writers, you know, so that these other kids growing up, these other younger girls growing up could see that you could be a author outside of just a musician or whatever. And, you know, I thought, well, is she challenging me? Because I'm up for a challenge. And I was like, I'm not an author. I'm not a writer. I'm not going to sit there and do no novel. It's not in me. But in hindsight, every day on Instagram, I was posting um, three quotes a day plus a picture now. So the algorithm back then, they say two quotes and one picture or two pictures and one quote. And okay. I was like, I never, ever, ever, ever wanted to be the person to just gather quotes from off the internet because one, I was always leery about someone coming back and trying to sue me. So okay. I, I just challenged myself to make stuff up myself. And once I started doing that and posting it and, and people were giving feedback like, wow, this is dope. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> I am a little goat. <laughs> <laughs> so I took all of those quotes from, yeah. you know, the year, the entire year. Now imagine 365 days for that entire year, three quotes a day. Right. So imagine all the collections of quotes. And this is all like original. I copy wrote my own stuff. Um, and I put it in four books, actually five books. My fifth book, I never posted on Instagram because I was like, at this time, I said, you know, people are catching on and, you know, I, I, people are catching on to my clever ways and I don't want them to be like taking my quotes before I copyright it. Right. So my fifth book was never posted on Instagram. It all came from my heart. So the title of that one was, um, is, uh, I can't remember right now, but it's uh, something. I can't remember. I have to go grab that book but these, yeah. these quotes all came from instagram and this is another another reason why whatever you do you may not understand why you do what you do but there's a greater picture and some of the books that people flip through at events that i at pop-up events that i go to um the most recent one someone was actually crying when they flipped through my quote book and they were like, this is me. And I was like, they didn't show me what quote it was and I wasn't going to be nosy about it. But I was like, dad, what came from my soul? Yeah. Touched somebody years later. Because that book, I published that book like maybe a year or two before they actually saw it. And to, if I didn't follow my heart, my soul, or whatever I was supposed to do, I would not have evoked that emotion out of her. Yeah. And it's just like how connected we are as humans, we have to really be thankful, you know? Absolutely. That's an amazing, so I appreciate you, appreciate you sharing that. I'm looking on your, on your site. Where, where, where would I be able to, to find your books? So I just got my site redone. It should be, it should be. I mean, be is, it, is it on the Be The Difference LLC? There, yeah, it, it should be there under one of the tags. Okay, now I did it. I did see um, you had a pair of socks that came from one of your quote books. So that's pretty cool. It, do a lot of the different quotes you have on here come from that book? Or those so books? that's only my part two book. My part two book, yeah, it's only available on socks. And once I finish putting all the quotes on <laughs> that, from that part two book on there, I'm discontinuing it. But let me tell you the backstory real quick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I absolutely, after I printed my first book, that thing hit hard. Like, it really hit hard. And I was like, you know, the second one needs to come harder. So when I, when I finished doing my second one, I was like, ooh, these don't seem as hard as my first one. Like, they don't seem to be hitting and having the, don't you know, when I'm putting these quotes on the side, I'm like, ooh, this is good. Yeah. Like, how could you discontinue it? But I, I've told too many people around the states and the world or whoever has purchased that, you know. I have to be a woman of my word. So, like, literally, that book is going to be done. So, that you know. is dope. 
I feel bad because there's like really some really good, good quotes on there. Like that first one, I, I believe it says uh, uh, something about I've never met a beautiful person with an ugly soul. Yep. Like that's just like, oh, you know what I mean? Like how could I, how could I just continue to do that? But again, yeah. I'm going to come to my word. Also, my fifth book, the name of it is called Self-Reflection quotes that make you reflect and then I have a picture of a mirror in the sky can you see now and then it says from my heart to your hand so that's pretty much you know it's pretty much like a, a deep insight of who I am anybody right. who gets that book you'll really like understand who I am the journeys I go through the stuff that I think about you know so that's that book okay and since I said it a little earlier then I usually say it at the end, but we can say it right now. Um, make sure to go and check out be the difference LLC.com and look at all these amazing designs. And uh, you have graphic t-shirts, novel socks, uh, premium hoodies. So it's an amazing uh, collection that you have here. And it also, I see the addiction kills the family shirt is still on there as well. So, uh, so yeah, check that out for sure. So who is your who is your target audience or uh, the individuals that you that your brand be the difference appeals to the most? I appeal to a lot of middle aged people, Mm -hmm. I would say between 30 and 50. Like they they really get my book. So like just so you know, at the bottom of the, um, the website is the book link. But I appeal to them a lot. And. I do appeal to like between 20s and 30s for like the socks because my socks is only 12 of any time and when they're sold out, they're never made again. So the, that helps me be creative as well. So you're actually getting something that majority of the world can't have. And right. I do that because imagine like when you're younger or if you're a man or woman and I just use an example of Ferrari. Ferrari only has 12 12 books, 12 cars ever, right? Me. Mm-hmm. And only certain people can get that. So twofold. Subliminally, it teaches you that you can have something exclusive and still be cool about it. And the other thing is, it teaches you that subliminally, you can be an individual. So every single thing that I do has a purposeful meaning, whether people catch it or not. Sometimes I have to tell people, but some people catch it, you know, yeah. and I appeal to a lot of people who are spiritual and and stuff like that. So it, it's a it's a wide range, but I, I really want to I really want to target people who are hurting and need comfort. That's who I really want to target, and that's pretty much all of us. Right, <laughs> you know. Got you. No, absolutely. Um, so you you kind of answered this already, but I'm gonna ask this anyway because this is a prepared question that I have for you. <laughs> no, no problem. Um, but what has been the most unexpected reaction? And I know you spoke about the young lady um, who teared up when she read one of your quotes and you don't know which one it is. Is there someone, you know, who saw or wore one of your uh, designs and had an unexpected, you know, maybe someone else saw it, you know, just something that you've witnessed that was an unexpected reaction? Absolutely. Uh, earlier in my business, I was definitely afraid of wearing the messages that I was putting out. I think there's reasons why you know, I didn't want people to know I was the founder or I was running it. That's one thing because I'm a very private person. Okay. And the other thing is I just wasn't sure if I could handle people's reactions. Because, you know, sometimes people react negatively with yeah. something that is that out there in your face. So I was wearing the prayer work t-shirt. That, is, that was designed over and over again. So okay. <laughs> um, I, I'll explain the new design, but I was wearing it and I was crossing the street and there was a woman that was sitting on a bench and she was, I, I didn't notice her until she just said, thanks for the reminder. And I was like, who is she talking to? But of course, I was the only one. And I noticed that she was crying. And then she said, thanks for the reminder. And I'm looking like, what did I do? And by the time I, I just, you know, out of being polite, I said, no problem. By the time I got to my car, I was like, oh, she's talking about my shirt. Because I was having prayer work. I had prayer work on. 
And the only thing I did after that was I ran to the car. Once I, I got had business cards on me. You always need to have business cards everywhere you go. Right. So I went up to her and I said, if you ever need to talk to anyone, you can reach out to me anytime. Yeah. Because you know, obviously she was hurting. And that just was another... You know, it was it was another reminder, a peaceful reminder. Joy, keep going. Because at that time, I was just like, things aren't popping off as quickly as I would like. So I think I might as well just give up. Is it really doing anything positive? And that was just another another quote, another reminder that this is something your purpose is supposed to do. And I was happy, but I also just said, you know what? My mind wanders. I was like, what if she was going to go home and do something detrimental to her? Yeah. What if she was at her wit's end? Who knows? But by wearing a message that I didn't even have to say helped her, that was so amazing. And this is what all of us have the capability of doing. We don't have to say a word. Your inspiration could just be the smile on your face. You smile at someone. And they did it for me, too. I'll never forget. I was driving home. I had a really hard, hard, hard when I say a hard day at work, it was emotionally hard. I was stretched to my limit, and I was breaking down. Um, I was stopped at a stop sign, and there was a woman that crossed the street, and she just smiled at me. Tears were like, I was so mad and, and upset, like tears started going down my eyes. And I would never, I always said I would never allow this place to make me cry, and it mm-hmm. did. But yeah. when I saw her smile, it just said, I felt like it was God smiling at me. I really felt like it was God smiling through her to me, just saying everything's going to be okay. And it just, it was so beautiful. I don't know who that was. You never know who you're entertaining. But I will never, ever forget that. And it just keeps reminding me, and I hope it reminds everyone else listening, that your actions can be a direct, reflection of how somebody else is going to. I know we're supposed to be, you know, responsible for our own reactions and, and how we act towards people. But if you're not there yet, if you've never done the work to get healed, you're not going to be there. You're not going to know it. Right. But that's where be the difference comes in so that we can start healing so that we can have a better world that I know is capable of being. It was before. Why can't it go back to it then? You have some amazing, uh, I say stories, but it's it's life stories, right? If we can get that message through your T-shirts, subliminally, all of these different things, right? That's that's definitely, uh, from my perspective, uh, being the difference. And I really applaud you. That's why I, I, I went to your site and I was looking through all the different designs and looking through the quotes and the meanings. And it really influenced and empowered and motivated me just looking at your website. So I want to thank you for that. I mean, like, I I just say, you know what? Um, I, I have a podcast that I used to do. I used to do it daily. I, my goal was to hit a thousand episodes. Okay. And once I hit a thousand episodes, it'd be like, whatever. So I hit a thousand episodes last March. But in one of the episodes, I was talking about how we need to change our vernacular and understand what we say because we put action by that. So I believe that our world is better. I believe people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. I believe if we hear more action oriented and and instead of the word like hope, because hope keeps you suspended, instead of saying hope, it's just like my desire is. So I try to be very very careful with the words that I say because it becomes reality, you know? And yes. I desire for more people to continue to work on their past, to continue to work on their traumas and overcome them. Like we're always going to be overcoming. There's no way that we can be absolutely healed from anything. We're always overcoming. And I believe the reason why we can never be absolutely healed It's because we always need to rely on something that we can't see, which is God, your maker, creator, or whoever you believe in. It's always going to be that. And it it keeps us humble. It keeps us knowing that our life is, you know, it's it's, it's fragile. 
and yeah. something that's sustaining us. And I tell you, I tell you, if it were not for the things that I had to go through, I would still be watching TV. I would still be distracted, programmed by things that will, would have kept me from my purpose and kept me from this mission to encourage people and, and for, you know, to ignite, to just be a, an igniter, to, to start that spark and then somebody else takes the candle and keeps on burning. You yeah. know, I'm very, very, very conscious that I'm leaving a legacy. And whoever takes the legacy up, they need to be just as prepared or better. So it's, it's, it's very crucial that we all know that we are doing something. Right. And we have the choice to do good or bad. And that's up to us and our daily activities and, and what we do, what we absorb. You know, I believe we're creatures of absorption and what we absorb is what we become. So what are you absorbing more of and that actually looks like what you are now? What did you do three years ago? Because now is what is you started three years ago. So if you feel like you're not going anywhere or are not going anywhere, think about what you did three years ago. You were doing nothing three years ago, so that's what you equated. If you started working on your business three years later, that's as far as your business has, has gone and it can go further. If you right. started working on your traumas now, two, three years, or maybe six months from now, you're going to be a more complete W-H-O-L-E person. And right. that's what I believe we're here to do, is become whole and to help others get whole. I'm sitting here looking, I'm listening to you and I'm, I'm looking at this shirt, which is very, um, you know, because sometimes you survive things, right? And you really don't want to talk about it. But um, one of the, one of the things when I meet people, I, how do I say this? So first let me talk about the shirt. The shirt says I'm a survivor of, and it's like fill in the blank. I will not be defeated. Mm-hmm. And I, and, and why that stands out to me is, you know, the statement, you never know what people have been through. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can meet someone on a certain day, like the lady who saw you about to break down and she smiled and that kind of, you know, brought you back, right? Mm-hmm. You get you run into the person who's super mean at that moment, right? But you don't know anything about this person. But you, because they're mean at that moment, you may say, oh, this person's a B or this person's, mm-hmm. you know, not a good person. Or you don't know them. You don't know what they've been through. And so to have that shirt, because I believe, and I, I'm pretty sure everyone has been through mm-hmm. something. Some a lot more tragic than others, obviously, right? But we've survived a lot of things just as people, and I will not be defeated. And that can kind of, from my perspective, and I'll just tell you how I feel personally when I look at it, is this it's almost disarming, right? It's almost yeah. an invitation to a connection. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, yeah. with that with that statement. And th- that's why I'm just really I'm I'm looking through your stuff, I'm stuttering. Because I'm really <laughs> fascinated, you know, and I'm I'm a go on here and I'm a grab one of those books uh, just so I can look at some of the quotes. I'm just I'm I'm really amazed and glad <laughs> that I've had this conversation with you. And that's real talk. Last comment before I ask you another question. That mm-hmm. was really powerful what you said about you were nervous. I'll use nervous about wearing the shirts that you were making or the quotes mm-hmm. that you were making. And I want you to touch, just go back a little bit, you know, to hindsight. And we saw how you got through it, but how long were you in that space? Oh, wow. I had to, like, I was, I'm trying to grow a, a grassroots company and I'm trying to not only make, is it a company, but it's like an emotional thing. It's about people. It's about humanity. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't hitting. <laughs> it wasn't hitting. And and people were trying to convince Joy, you're going to have to show your face. And I'm like, I don't want to. Like, I really don't want to. I don't want. I never wanted to be somebody that points the finger like, yeah, you're the reason. Yeah. You know, because being positive can bring out the negative in some people who, oh, yeah. know, I don't know oh, what yeah. spirit they're in. It's the spirit that they're in or the spirit that's inside of them. 
you know, not necessarily them, but whatever is driving them, I, I guess you could say their trauma, whatever spirit of trauma that they're in could be pushing them to say like, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I just never wanted to be on somebody's spotlight. And I made myself do it. And now I don't care. I'm just like, I'm wearing whatever I have to wear. I even wore kindness starts with me. And it's crazy. A lot of people like the message, but they're like nervous about wearing it. And I'm like, because one person was like, I'm not kind. I was like, yes, you are. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's crazy the conversations that come out of some of these events when people are looking at the shirt. But I said, you know what? I don't care. I just put on my stuff. I am the billboard and I will be the billboard. I've been a billboard for everyone else's company. Now I need to be a billboard for myself and I know it works. So that outweighed the nervousness, the fear and the rejection aspect thought. That outweighed it because I remember, always remember, I'm here to help someone else. And if by me exposing their flaws to themselves or they outwardly expose it, then that's one thing. Then I've done what I had to do. And guess what? I didn't even have to say a word. <laughs> you know, I physically didn't have to say anything. You right. just saw whatever you need to see right at that time. And I was right where I was supposed to be at that place. And that's it. All is done. All right. This is a, this is a, we'll, we'll uh, lighten the mood a little bit. And uh, let me see what you come up with this question. All right. If you mm-hmm. could see any celebrity or public figure wearing one of your designs, who would it be and why? I would have to say I would love to see Lauren Hill in one of my designs. Lauren Lauren Hill Hill is such a deep person. Like, I would love to just have lunch with her. Just to sit down and have lunch with her and just talk about life. Like, you know how how much growth I'll get just by talking to her? Like, I would love her because I know she has a purpose. And her purpose, she's living her purpose outside of who she was supposed to be, you know, by what community standards are, by the the industry standards work. I would love to have a conversation with her. Um, Just a couple other people. I would also, um, man, her name is escaping my mind right now, but she's an actress and she was in The Net. Uh, If you remember that movie, The Net, Sandra Bullock. I would love to have- I was going to say Sandra Sandra Bullock. Bullock. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I would love to. You know why? I saw an interview of her uh-huh. and, and back in the day, and she was talking about how to test to see who her friends were. She would all fly them all out to an island and give them stipends, and she knew who her friends were by the way they, some of them said, well, I need more money, or I need this, that, and the other. And the ones that didn't do it, didn't ask for extra, she knew that was her friend. And I was like, oh, I like her. You know? Wow. Yeah. I, and yeah. I feel that, and I, I've always, I've always admired her for that. Um, it, those two people, and I don't know. There's other people, you know. There are other people, but you know, I was, I want to meet the person, not the, not the, uh, not the person carrying the, the, the pack, the bag. You know what I'm saying? I want to meet the actual person. And this, right. when I see celebrities, because I used to do a lot with celebrities back in the day, but when I see celebrities, I see the person. And I see a lot of a world of hurt. And all I want to do is just be there for them. Right. So that they actually have somebody that they can trust. And I believe throughout the course of my life, majority of the people who have met me always felt comfortable enough to trust. Me. And that right. just makes me feel good. I'll tell you what, I trust you. <laughs> no because you have a you have a very inspiring way about you right um so and you put like i said you put your money behind your words so uh, i definitely am inspired now i've asked you a few questions is there anything that you'd like to you know mention or talk about that i haven't asked i would like the my most important thing is for your listeners to know that they're beautiful and that they're amazing Mm. There's no mistake about them. No matter how everything has gone through their life, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, it does not determine what the next step of your life is. The next step of your life is when you decide to, to, to make that change. You don't have to wait until you wake up the next day. 
you start now. Right. Because we don't have tomorrow. That's another thing, right? We, we all feel like we don't have faith, but you absolutely do. The right. fact that you get up every morning and think that your legs are supposed to work, that's faith. Oh, yeah. You, you know that you're secure in your own self that it's going to work, that it's going to walk. I've met plenty of people, or I've known plenty of people who have had something and in an instant it's gone. Yeah. Life is so fragile. And I want you to, I want everyone to love who they are, get to know themselves. And I always say, practice looking at yourself in the mirror. If you can't look at that reflection of your soul for at least five minutes, then you know you have something to work on. You have some traumas that you need to work on. Think about the thing that happened to you when you were two years old or even as an infant, if you can remember that far back. It's a memory because it's something that needs to be worked on. Work on that thing. Once you heal from that thing or overcome that thing, you know, because it'll come back in different ways and different people. But once you come to the awareness that this is what was stopping you, you're going to make sure that that won't be the stop next time. Something else will arise, but you'll work through that as well. It's a continuation. And I just want you to believe that you are beautiful and amazing. Hmm. That's one thing. And then you can shop me the difference, LLC.com, <laughs> probably on all <laughs> social media platforms at BTD LLC. I actually started a personal page. Again, that's one thing I was always desperately afraid of is my privacy because I know Mm -hmm. how people can be, you know. Um, But I started a personal page on Instagram. It's called the one and only Joy W. So if you guys want to check that out, you'll see like who the behind the scenes stuff, like stuff that I won't release in public, you know. So you could check that out. But otherwise, I, that's how, the how, most important thing. All right. How you, you said the one and only joy. Is that w- it? How do you spell joy. it out? Just spell it out the way it is. The one and only joy W. Now, you know how we can get creative with these. Uh, yeah, with these. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know what, too? Ironically, everything that I've done has always been approved, like right away. Yeah. You know, I, I got my, when I, Happy, well, not when I trademarked the company, it took less than a year because the logo was so unique, no one else in the world had it. Right. Beautiful. You know, so it's just like, I, and I like end up being a lot of people's first. Like, you know, I, like I said, the, um, the, 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 the talk show that I had, it was called Hello World. I go on it from time to time now, but it used to be every day to be 65. And I used to, um, get the point that I was about to make. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I'm sorry. I, I was a lot of people's first interview. You know what I mean? So yeah. that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's do the promotion. I'm, I'm, I'm looking on here. I'm going to check your Hello World out and see what you're about. Is it a video or is it audio? It's you. It's, a all, it's all visual. Um, it's okay. on YouTube. It's on the Be okay. The Difference Clothing YouTube channel. Yeah. It's a thousand episodes plus of just me talking. And you know that I the other the beautiful thing about it is I stopped trying to make the topic because once I hit that live button, something always made me change the topic and I would always have to change the title. So I always made the title after the, the uh, after I aired. And yeah. it's all original. Like the content is all original. I had, and half the time, I know it wasn't just me. I was a vessel. And God felt compelled, felt good enough, felt that I was a good enough vessel to speak through me, right. to lay whatever message to whoever was listening, watching. And I, that's just, that just makes me feel good. Yeah. Wow. Even in all of my, even in all of my faults in life, I still am a, considered a good vessel to be spoken to. That's beautiful. Wow. That in itself right there is a great, closing message right because we're all <laughs> flawed and we're all you know have thought or done or been in, involved in or experienced or whatever right and you know that doesn't that can't define you you can't let mm-hmm. certain things define you you know what i mean so uh, hell i don't even want to ha- talk about me and <laughs> my it wasn't bad you get what i'm saying but there are things i'm like ah, i probably shouldn't have done that 
you know, uh, yeah. you know, if the right person, if the right person saw that, that could have went a lot wrong for me in my life. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's why you've been protected. I like, I like you, we all should be thankful for our, I call them my team. I say my ancestors, God, creator, whatever y'all want to call it. They all, whoever is there, you know, my team that's on me, that's mm. just dedicated to protect me. Like, I'm so thankful because, you know, while like your, like your life, I didn't really have too many bad things or did it many bad things, but whatever they protected me from that I could not see yeah, or saw, y'all keep on, you keep on, trust me, y'all, when you give party a piece of, I said this the other day, when you give a little piece of your heart and your soul to this unseen, I guarantee you, they're going to open doors that you can't. They're going to make sure mm. you're protected and safe. Your, right. your head will not get harmed. You may be scathed, but you will not be harmed because you are protected. And you better pay homage to that protection. So I'm like, oh, ancestors, God, thank you. <laughs> and just know, um, and this is to everyone as well, there are a lot of people who are invested in your success. And you may not know who they are, mm-hmm. but they're there. And they're invested in your success, right? So don't ever feel alone you know don't ever feel you know i I like that when you you saw the lady and you ran and got you i'm I'm gonna end this podcast but you saw the lady (laughs) and you ran it and you ran and got your your business card like call me anytime if you just need to talk like that's that's what it's about you know what i'm saying that's what Mm -hmm. that's putting your money where your mouth is you know and i know that's just a term it has nothing to do with money it just has to do with your time just being accessible one being open in 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 your eyes are just open right you you're seeing people for who they are you're seeing the celebrities for who they are and not their projection you yeah. know but as a person and that's a beautiful thing and you know that's a beautiful whether, thing whether whether people believe it or not we're all one paycheck away from being homeless yeah. i don't care if you're a billionaire or not like I mean, not to bring up any names, but there's a celebrity that lost a big contract from what I was seeing on you on YouTube. They lost a big yeah. contract that was endorsing them and pretty much all their money. So like now they're having a nervous breakdown. That's what they said. I don't know for a fact because I wasn't there. Hey. We're all one paycheck away from being homeless. So never think that you can't be where someone else is. Oh, always have yeah. grace. Have grace. Absolutely. Yeah, don't throw stuff in people's face. Wow. Hey, so, all right, we're going to shut it. <laughs> Thank you, <Yes>. Joy. Because <laughs> we're about to go on and on. For, I know. <laughs> but, but thank you, Joy, for sharing, like, your, your I'm going to say, inspiring journey and the story behind Be the Difference Clothing and your passion. You know, because you see stuff. Like I can go on your site and be like, oh, this is this is cool, right? But now to have the story behind it from the person who created it, it makes it even more special. It means, mm-hmm. you know, that the heart was in it. It's not just about making a buck. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's about making a buck because it is business and you can't disown that. But it's about being the difference. <laughs> it's such a great yeah. title for a company, right? For what it is that you're doing. I was um, nervous about that title too. I mean, it's so simple, but it's like a call to action. Mm-hmm. Be the difference. Uh, your passion uh, for creating those meaningful designs and your commitment to making a positive impact are truly remarkable. And I appreciate your willingness to open up and share your experiences with uh, with my listeners. And to our audience, we hope you've enjoyed this insightful conversation with joy and gain valuable insights into the power of personal experiences and the importance of taking action. Make sure to check out Be The Difference Clothing at Be The Difference LLC dot com dot com and uh, explore their thought or joys thought provoking designs that inspire (laughs) change and promote unity. And remember, it's the small actions that can make a big difference. And together, let's strive to be more than bystanders and create a world where love and understanding prevail. So 
Thank you once again, Joy. Any final um, words of wisdom? You gave me all I'm, I need for the day. Like, I'm ready. I, I do. <laughs> so just so you guys know, um, 10% of all the clothing designs go to Hayden Cart. It's a charity that raises awareness for babies with congenital heart disease. And mm. they are located in North Arlington, New Jersey. So they're very, very local, which is something that I love. And I just felt compelled that I can't be an inspirational company without giving back. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? You know, what's so. the what's what's the um charity again? It's called Hayden's H A Y D E N S Heart Inc. Yeah, I've been donating to them since like the second year of incorporation. So nice. Ten percent of the clothing designs, not my books, just the clothing. Gotcha. But, um, my final word again is: remember, you're beautiful and amazing. Right. That's it. Just just don't see what you see as the end all be all. Just just know that there's so much more layers to who you are. And once you peel back that layer, it's so beautiful. And and you'll get there. We all will get there. Hey Joy, you ever have a conversation with somebody and probably what you would probably experience with Lauren Hill. And you know it has to end, but you don't I want know. it to Yeah, I know, yes, I know. I know and I keep going too. Oh yeah, I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> no, it's not even that. It's just, it's just. I'm saying it from my perspective, not yours. It's just like ah, I keep wanting to ask another question. But anyway, <laughs> what, what, what what I'm what I'm going to ask you is um, maybe in the future you come back on a on a on a second episode. Absolutely, I would love to, and and I, as long as everybody's okay with that, I would love to. Yeah, ab- <laughs> absolutely. All right, I appreciate your time and. Thank you. All right. Have a good one, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Hindsight, the podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on future episodes packed with inspiring stories. Before you go, leave me a message with your thoughts, feedback, or suggestions for future topics. And if you're loving what you hear, please take a moment to rate this episode Your feedback helps me to grow and reach more listeners just like you. So remember, life's a journey. Stay tuned, stay curious, and keep gaining wisdom through the power of hindsight. Until next time. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe, leave a message, and rate this episode. When you look back in hindsight, everything is